I'm so disappointed that I'm not leading in the row. I kind of assumed that when they, when I got hired by Jim, that Kirk was going to play the rest. Just saying. Good morning. How are y'all today? You are not awake, or better yet, not in here. So we are glad you are here. Hey, uh, I just wanted y'all to notice that uh, our announcements are going to be flashing a lot more. We uh, have gotten someone who is helping us do that, and we are very thankful for her. If there is something, just as a side of note, If there's something you want announced, the way we do it is what's in the bulletin gets put on the screen, so you need to have that in to Deborah by uh, Tuesday of the week before, and we will do the best. We will not guarantee that it will get put up there, but we will do our best to put it up there, okay? Does that make sense? Is that cool? All right, that announcement will never happen again. Okay, so don't ask again. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, You got the VBS form? Everybody take it out. Take it out. Hold it in your hand, in your greasy little hands. Put it down in your lap with a hymnal, Bible, little red book, and fill her out, all right? That means you. That's who do we need help with, is you, all right? So sign up for that. Uh, we got lots of information and fun stuff out there with uh, Dr. Tracy and Professor Sharon or whatever they're going by today. Um, We have a visioning meeting, that's on the back of your uh, bulletin, what is God imagining, March 9th from uh, 6 to 8, and it'll be down in the kids' corner, which is the last room on the right. Please come, even if you haven't been, you are welcome to come, is what I understand. So if I'm wrong, it won't be the first time today. All right, then today, after our late service, we will have a presentation for the uh, Colors of New England trip that we've kind of put together for um, this fall. Uh, If you have any questions about it, please join that presentation. It'll be right after church, uh, right after late church in the fellowship hall. Seems like it's going to be a pretty incredible trip as you go and, and see all the colors of New England, and it'd be great fellowship time. Uh, on the back, we, we, we missed two proofreads. Um, there is no Arbor House today. That was last week. So if you read that in the bulletin, you feel like going, um, you're welcome to go visit, but you will be kind of with whoever you come with, all right? Then also, the SPRC uh, committee, they should have gotten an email this week, but it says they're meeting this week, and they are not. So those are the announcements, and... I would like to welcome you and say we are glad you're here. If this is your first time to be with us, thank you. We have a gift for you at our welcoming desk. Please stop by. Please take a moment and grab the red folder, fill that out, and pass it down to the person next to you. And now let's stand up and let's pass the peace that God has for us this morning. In the marvelous light I'm running Out of darkness, out of shame By the cross you are the truth You are the light
Thank you for that marvelous light, Lord, how we, how we can be so blind and so dumb. And Lord, how you just come and you've, you've healed us, Lord, and we just receive that healing. And even now, Lord, I just I, I pray for, uh, for your spirit to guide us and lead us, to fill us, Lord, so that we can go out, so that we can, so that we can be your hands and your feet, Lord, and your heart. But Lord, I, I just thank you for those that you've brought here today, Lord, and I just pray that as you do, that your sweet spirit meet us here um, and just fill us. We love you so much. Great is your faithfulness. Great is your faithfulness, oh God.
Thank you. Please be seated. Would you join me in prayer? Almighty God, we do celebrate and thank you that your grace is enough. It is what we hold on to. It's all we need. And God, we have so many people in our church who need to receive and feel and experience your grace. Your grace in salvation, your grace in healing, your grace in your presence in their lives. God, we lift up to you Peggy Adcox, Courtney Allen. Ray Baumgart, Carolyn Branch, Ben Butler, Gene Collins, Al Davis, Dinah Day, Hubert Ellison, Leela and Nelvia Fisher, Stephanie Fowler, Marianne Gardner, Bob Gall, Curtis Gray, Larry and Hazel Hamlin, Steve and Pat Hatch, Pete Hibbler, Jim Coleman, Patricia McDonald, Dave and Ruth McGaugh, the Norton family, Carol Parker, Blaine Powell, James Powell, Bob Powers, Alice Rudenstein, Donovan Rude, Ori Stan Sanford, Rodney Short, Kathy Stones, Kevin Statler, Lorraine Teeters, Leslie Trish, Tom Van Tassel, Bud Whitehead, and John Woolley. God, we lift up to you Shiloh Rivera, who's heading out again this week to go to work. And this is his last Sunday with us, God. We thank you for his service to you. We pray your blessings on him as he goes. God, we pray for our Christians, brothers and sisters in the Middle East, especially those who are, who were kidnapped and are being held by those that are part of that group called ISIS. God, we pray for their safe return. We pray for strength for them. And Jesus, we pray specifically that you open the hearts of those men who are part of that organization called ISIS, God, and let them see the truth. Let them find Jesus. Lord, we pray for those in our church who are suffering and struggling with cancer. We pray for J.J. Baskin, John Berlin, Jimmy Bibles, Joe Boyd, David Burke, Travis Campbell, Diana Collins, Norma Davis, Bob Dyer, Carson Eubank, Jack Furr, Carol Hoff, Ray Hufford, David Inman, Sherry Jones, Tammy Jones, Carolyn Kendrick, Katie Meyer, Kevin Mott, Debbie Pack, Ray Pride, Charlie Robertson, Kathy Rose, Shelley Stewart, Mary Lee Webb, and Cindy Walden. 
Lord, though our list is long, it is not close to all those that need you. And we lift them up to you right now. Almighty God, we thank you for hearing our prayers. We thank you that your grace is at work in each and every one of those lives. Lord, as I look over and see where Dave and Ruth are supposed to be sitting this morning, I pray an extra blessing on that life and on that family. God, we don't know necessarily what to pray in situations like theirs, but we give them to you. God, we give you each person that we love. We give you our lives. God, so often you bless us and we forget to thank you for those blessings. We thank you for the rain. We thank you that we are free to worship you here without fear of real persecution. We celebrate, God, the freedoms of being an American. God, we pray that we don't take advantage of those, but instead we use them to their fullest potential. We thank you, God, for every blessing you've poured down on us. And now, God, in return for those blessings, we give back to you gifts of tithes and offerings. We ask that you bless them, God, and you help us use those to go and change the world for you. We love you, Jesus. In your son's name we pray. Amen. You are God in heaven And you am I on earth So I let my words be few Jesus, I am so And I stay of all love songs I want to bring to you so I let my words leave you Jesus I am so in love with I'm not afraid. 
Let's make it simple today. Let's just thank God for the rain. How's that sound? We've been praying a lot for it, and we're going to pray that it continues, but let's together give a great big thanks be to God for the rain. Thanks be to God. Amen. I'd like to invite up our children for our children's time with Miss Tracy, who's changed outfits. Good morning. It's good to see you guys. Come on down. As you can see, I've got a friend with me today. You guys, come on up. There's plenty of room. Good morning. I love your pretty bow. Do you guys, Sydney, do y'all want to come sit this way just a little bit so we can fit all our friends? There we go. Well, this is Yuba. Can y'all say hi, Yuba? Yuba is a dog in training to help someone who can't see, someone who's blind. How do you think Yuba can do that? Any ideas how Yuba can help someone who can't see? You going this way? You want your friend? Oh, oh, you're help Bonnie. Thank you, Brayson. That's right. He'll guide them around. Will Yuba kind of become the eyes for someone who can't see? Yeah. He'll help guide them around, help cross the street safely, protect them, keep them from harm's way. Will they need to trust Yuba? Does that take trust to do that? Take lots of trust, doesn't it? Because they're putting their life in Yuba's hands. Well, this morning's lesson is about a blind man. Jesus healed a blind man and gave him sight. And it was the first time he could ever see. When the blind man can see, he told Jesus, he said, I believe, and he believed that Jesus was God's son. But you know what? There were some people were very jealous of Jesus for doing this. Do you know who those people were? They were the Pharisees. You said they could see like you and I could, but they were blind in a different way. They were spiritually blind. Any idea on what it means to be spiritually blind? Nico? They don't, that's right. They don't see how amazing God is. They couldn't see that Jesus was God's son, and they were very jealous of him, and they didn't trust him. And so this, our lesson this morning is about a blind man being healed, but guess what? It tells us something even more important. You see, even though we can see, we need to make certain that we don't become spiritually blind like the Pharisees. We need to say, Lord, we believe when people ask if, if, if Jesus is God's son. And do we need to put our complete trust in Jesus? Sometimes or all the time? When do we trust Jesus? All the time. That's right. Well, I've got a, a mask for you this morning to remind you of the story of Jesus healing the blind man. And it's one of those really fun ones because it's those magic color scratch-off masks. And as you color it, I want you to think about how you always need to put your trust in Jesus. Can you do that? Yes, everyone can do that. I know you're asleep because it's raining, but we can do that. Awesome. All right. You want to pray together? Dear God, thank you for loving us. Help us put our trust in you. And we thank you for giving us our Savior Jesus, your Son. Amen. Are you all ready? Yay, Jesus! Thank you, Harvey, for getting us started. All right.
taking anybody's turn. Oh, whose turn is it? Oh, there she is. Today's scripture is John 9, 1 through 34, and it's on your uh, pew Bible on page 102. As he walked along, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, neither this man nor his parents sinned. He was born blind so that God's work might be revealed in him. We must work the works of him who sent me. While it is day, night is coming when no one can work. As long as I'm in the word, world, I'm in the light of the world. When, then, when he said this, he spat on the ground and made mud and made mud with the saliva and spread the mud on the man's eyes, saying to him, "Go wash in the pool of Shalom." which means sent, which when then he went and washed and came back able to see. The neighbors and those who had seen him before as a beggar began to ask, this is not a man who used to, is this not a, the man who used to sit and beg? Some were saying it is he, others were saying no, but it is someone like him. He kept saying, I am the man, but they kept asking him, then how were your eyes open? He answered the man called, Jesus, the man called Jesus, made mud, spread it on my eyes, and said to me, Go to Shalom and wash. Then I went and washed and received my sight. They said to him, Where is he? He said, I do not know. The Pharisees investigate the healing. They brought to the Pharisees the man who had formerly been blind. Now it was the Sabbath day when Jesus made the mud and opened his eyes. When the Pharisees also began to ask him how he had received his sight, he said to them, he put mud in my eyes, and, I, and then I washed, and now I see. Some of the Pharisees said, This man is not from God, for he does not observe the Sabbath. But others said, How can a man who is a sinner perform such signs? And they were divided. So they said again to the blind man, What do you say about him? It was your, it was your eyes he opened. He said, Is a prophet? The Jews did not believe that he had been blind and that he had received his sight until they had called his parents of the man who had received his sight and asked him, Is this your son who you say was born blind? How then does he now see? His parents answered, We know that this is our son, that he was born blind, but we do not know how it is that he sees, nor do we know who opened his eyes. Ask him. He's of age. He will speak for himself. His parents said this because they were afraid of the Jews. For the Jews had already agreed that anyone who confessed Jesus to be the Messiah would be put out of the synagogue. Therefore, his parents said, He is of age. Ask him. So for the second time, they called the man who had been blind, and they said to him, Give glory to God. We know that this man is a sinner. He answered, I do not know whether this man is a sinner. One thing I do know, though, I was blind and now I see. They said to him, What did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? He answered them, I have told you already, and you would not listen. Why do you, not, why do you want to hear it again? Do you also want to become his disciples? Then they revealed him, saying, You are his disciple, but we are disciples of Moses. We know that God has spoken to Moses, but as for man, we do not know where he comes from. The man answered, There is an astonishing thing. Do you know where he comes from? And yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen to sinners, but he does listen to the one who worships him and obeys his will. Never since the world began has it been heard that anyone opened the eyes of a person born blind. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. They answered him, you were born entirely in sin and you are trying to teach us. And they drove him out. The word of God for the people of God. Thank you, Charmaine. If it makes you feel any better, I shortened it. <laughs> Initially, it was supposed to go to like 41. And I went, that's too long. So, good morning, church. Good morning. 
It is good to see all of you here this morning on this rainy, cool morning. I'm going to tell you, like I said last week, you should get extra credit for being here today. Amen? Okay. It is a day where it would be just as easy to crawl under the covers. Let us pray together. Holy God, hear our prayer. That the word that is spoken and the word that is heard this day may be for us by the power and inspiration of your Holy Spirit, the Word of God. Amen. I love these screens. Thank you for setting those screens up. We do continue today with our sermon series, Tell Me the Stories of Jesus. And in looking back, I can't believe this is number nine. Can you believe that? Because it's been, to me, very enjoyable for me to go back and study these scriptures and to see the things that I've missed in the past. And today we find ourselves in John chapter 9, as Tracy pointed out, where we find this man who was born blind, and Jesus healed him and he received his sight. Now, if we look at this passage carefully, we'll realize what I said a couple of weeks ago. It was not uncommon for Jesus to be drawn to people who were sick or suffering. People like that were drawn to him and he was drawn to them. And so for him to come in contact with this man was not unusual. And so in verse 2, when Jesus and the disciples encounter this man, they ask the question, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Now, we kind of snicker under our breath when we hear that question, right? Because it seems so foolish because we know better. No one sinned because of this illness. But my friends, honestly, I won't ask you to raise your hand, but haven't you also at some point in your life been angry and said, God, what did I do to deserve this? Again, you don't have to raise your hand because I know we've all done it. Have you never questioned something that happened in your life and yelled, why? Maybe you even shook your fist at the heavens and said, why God, why me, why is this happening now in my life? I know that I've become angry at things I've seen or things I've endured. And it's just natural for us as human beings to want things to be right and to fix things. And sadly, unfortunately, sometimes it's also natural for us to work real hard to get the scoop. To find out what's really going on. Not so much to help, but to be the first one with the information. I know none of you would ever do that. In any event, the story continues as the disciples persist with the interrogation. And I chose that word carefully. It is an interrogation, right? It seems like they are they're persisting. As they question Jesus, it seems very clear that they were still quite clueless as to his mission in the world. Instead, they're playing the blame game, Right? They're clueless about it, and in some sense, I think they're genuinely trying to understand what is a mystery to them and probably to others. When bad things happen to us or someone that we love, we want to know why. We want answers, and the reality is sometimes there are no answers, at least in this world. Maybe someday when we are reunited with our Savior and our Creator, we will know those answers. Now, we don't know why this man was born blind, but truly, does it matter? It really doesn't matter. Jesus wants to make sure and be very clear that it wasn't because of punishment for a sin. He says in verse 3, neither this man nor his parents sinned. He was born blind so that God's works might be revealed through him. You see, it didn't really matter to Jesus why the man was born blind. Only that he needed healing and only that when he was healed, glory would be given to God because of the healing. If we back up for a moment and we look at John chapter 3, verse 17, not 16, we all know 16, right? But 17 says that the master didn't come into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. So in this lesson, Jesus wants to show forth the power and the majesty of God by bringing light to this man who was in darkness. He wasn't concerned about whether or not the man deserved to be healed. He didn't weigh and balance the situation and decide, can I really do this? Does he deserve to be healed? Is he a good enough person? He only wanted the man to be able to see again. And so what happens next? Jesus spat on the ground and he made a mud paste with his saliva. He then put the paste on the man's eye. In verse 7 it says, go, wash in the pool of Siloam. Now that word meant sent. I think that's interesting. This man was sent as a part of his healing. He was sent to be obedient and do as Jesus had asked. 
The lesson goes on to tell us, then he went and washed. He was sent, and so he went and washed, and he came back able to see. Are you seeing a pattern in the Gospel of John? People being sent, people being required to take action. Because if they took action, then they themselves were part of the healing, and they could claim that. Think about the woman at the well. She was sent to tell others about Jesus, about this man who knew her so well that she didn't even have to explain herself. Think about the sermon John preached about the official son. The official was told, go home, you are sent, and your son will be made well. Think about the man by the pool. This is driving me crazy, I'm sorry, George. Now I can see you guys. If you go to sleep, I'll know. Think a man laying by the pool, he was sent, right? He was sent to get up on his mat and walk. If he had continued to lay there, nothing would have happened. But he had to take action. And I think we see this pattern all through the Gospel of John, and we see it again here this morning. The story tells us that the people began to marvel at what had happened because the blind man had been seen in the marketplace begging. Everybody knew he was blind. Everybody knew that he was disabled in that way. And so it was an obvious miracle with many witnesses. Jesus healed someone who had always known to be blind. We go back and we look at the very first sermon we preached on these miracles and signs and the healing, not the healing, the transformation of the water into wine. And he did that in a private way. He did that where only a few people knew about it because he didn't want his identity to be known at that point. And this morning it doesn't matter. He heals someone that everyone in the community knew was blind. You see, slowly he's making his journey to the cross. Surely he is becoming known as the one who heals. Of course, this all sent the Pharisees into orbit, right? They got upset because he was healing on the Sabbath. You know, truly he did two things. He made the mud paste out of saliva that was working, believe it or not. And he healed. That was working. Devout Jews knew they couldn't work on the Sabbath, and healing and making the saliva, mud, paste were both working. And so the investigation began. And they called this man who had been healed and said, how did this happen? And in verse 15, he simply said, he put mud on my eyes, then I washed, now I can see. He kept it very short, very brief. And so the Pharisees began to argue about Jesus, and the man told the Pharisees that he believed Jesus was a prophet. The skeptics were in the crowd. There's always skeptics, right? The skeptics were in the crowd and they didn't believe that the man had been born blind and so they called on the parents. They were nervous also about what was interrogation that they were experiencing. And so they kept it really simple as well. And they said in verse 21, ask him. He is of age. He will speak for himself. In other words, we don't want to be responsible for answering the wrong thing and then being kicked out of the synagogue. Because as you saw previously, it said people would be kicked out of the synagogue if they claimed that Jesus was the Messiah. They were terrified. They didn't want to be backed into a corner if they admitted that the Messiah healed their son. Can you tell what's happening here? The blame game is beginning, right? The blame game is happening and the blame game dissolved into that of fear. Suddenly everyone is afraid because the Pharisees were going crazy. The parents and their son didn't know how to answer without crossing that line, without endangering their ability to go to the synagogue and to pray. For the second time, the Pharisees began to question this man, saying in verse 26, What did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? I love how this son responded in verse 25. One thing I do know, that though I was blind, now I see. Very simplistic, right? Look, I don't understand it. I can't explain it. All I can tell you is I was blind when I woke up this morning. And now I have vision. Now I can see. My brothers and sisters, for him it was that simple. It was a miracle. It was unexplainable. And you know what? It really needed no explanation. It was just what happened. So my friends, this morning, what does this mean for us? Is it really that simple for you? Do you really accept on faith that these kinds of healings are possible? Do you believe that God can heal your deepest wounds and most painful sorrows? I believe it's much more than physical healing in this case. Although that's what's obvious in this particular lesson. 
We know that all of us have wounds that need to be healed. We need to be released. And sometimes it's not physical. I think quite often, more often, it's not physical. Maybe you're struggling with a broken heart. Maybe you're grieving the loss of someone dear. Maybe someone you trusted and you depended on has broken your trust and you feel betrayed. Maybe you're blind, at least spiritually blind. Maybe no matter how many lights God wants to shine into your path, you are determined not to see them. Because then you have to admit your own shortcomings, your own wrongdoings. You see, blindness isn't always physical. It can be emotional, it can be spiritual, it can be relational. Brothers and sisters in Christ, do you realize what things need to be healed in your life today? Do you have a need for that? Do you know you have a need for that? Do you feel that in your soul and in your spirit? Do you know the one who can patiently help you sort all that out? Because sometimes we get too overwhelmed and we're not even sure where to start, right? And we just say, Lord, I am so overwhelmed with life. And I have so many issues that I'm struggling with and I don't even know what's more important at this point. We kind of go back to a couple of weeks ago when I said, do you want to be made well? The man at the pool. I hope you know it's possible. And as I've said to you many times before, I don't want you to misunderstand. God doesn't always heal on this side. But sometimes he takes us home where we can be healed eternally. But God always heals, church. So do you believe that you can be healed and you can be restored? Do you know that's possible through our Savior, Jesus Christ? How do I know? I've been struggling for a year with a hip that's just driving me crazy. But I have faith that God is going to work through the doctors and the many tests that I have experienced and we continue to experience, and we're going to figure it out. How do I know? I once was lost. But now am found, was blind, but now I see. Thanks be to God. Let us pray together. Loving God, I thank you so much that you do heal us. And sometimes it's a challenge and sometimes we think it's an eternity before we reach that point. But Lord, help us not lose our faith in you. Help us to trust you in all things, with all facets of our life. Those things that hold us back, those things that we struggle with, those things that keep us from being in a complete relationship with you and those we love. Thank you, O oh God, that we can be blind and you can restore us. Thank you for your love and that you love us enough that you want to heal us. Help us to set aside our ego and all the things that keep us from welcoming and receiving that healing. In the strong name of Jesus Christ, who is the healer, we pray. Amen. This morning as we gather at the table, we prepare to come from all walks of life, from all situations in life, and we know that we bring different things to the table. We bring emotional burdens and spiritual burdens. We bring things that God can take care of if we just leave them there. I don't know what it is about us, our humanity. We want to hold on to it. We want to take it back. We want to be in control, right? Am I the only one? Please tell me I'm not. If we just leave it here at the rail, our Savior will take it and he will help us. Because he gathered with the disciples and he helped them understand before they even realized as they gathered that night before he went to his death. And he took bread. And he gave thanks and he broke the bread and he gave it to the disciples. And he said, take and eat. This is my body which is given for you, every one of you, to help you wherever you need that help today. I don't know where it is, but God knows and you know. What is it that you need healing from this day? After the supper, he took the cup and he filled it and he gave thanks. He passed the cup around the table where the disciples were seated and he said, drink from this, all of you. 
This is the cup of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins, for the healing of your body, for the strength that you need to restore you right at this very moment. Do this as often as you do it in remembrance of me. Won't you pray with me? Oh God, pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and the blood of Christ that we may be for the world, the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. And now as children of God, confident of that blessing and that love, let us pray the prayer our Lord taught us to pray when he said, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. and Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Brothers and sisters, as we come to this table this morning, we remember that we come from many walks of life, but we are all one in Christ Jesus. Amen? If you're here this morning and you're visiting with us, maybe you're not a member, maybe this is the first time you've ever walked in our doors. If you believe in Jesus Christ or you desire so to believe, this is open to you. This sacrament is open to all. You don't have to be Methodist or Presbyterian or Lutheran or Catholic. We put all kinds of labels on ourselves, but God doesn't label us. He calls us His children, and that is what you are. And so please know you are all welcome to come and receive this sacrament. As you come this morning, sometimes we wish to respond to the incredible grace that God pours upon us through this sacrament. If you want to do that, you can leave an offering uh, at the rail for the assistance fund where we help people who come in our doors through the week. That is optional. Please know that God's grace is free. Nothing is required except your heart and your soul and your spirit to be focused on Christ as you come to receive this sacrament. Will those who are assisting come forward at this time? We also have gluten-free elements that are available should you need those. Won't you come and celebrate the goodness of God? We will seek you first, Lord. You will hear our voices. Seek you first. 
Sometimes I fail, still your mercy remains. Should I stumble again, well, I'm caught in your grace, everlasting. Your light will shine when all else fades, never ending. Your glory goes beyond all.
control consume me from the inside out Lord let justice and praise become my embrace Does your soul cry from the inside out? Because God draws us, doesn't he? He wants to draw us. Sometimes we kind of go, oh, I can't hear, I can't hear, la, 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 right? We all do that at times. So I pray that as we close this service today, we prepare our hearts, prepare our spirits, prepare our minds for the healing that God wants to give us, to take our fingers out of our ears and hear when he calls us. If there are those who would join our church family, we would invite you to come as we close our service during this hymn. If you just need more time at the rail, that's what the rail is for. So come and spend this time now.
be rescued how about you but before we go there Shiloh I'm gonna miss you I'm not gonna embarrass him by making him come down here but would you indulge me as we pray for him as he leaves loving God we ask that you bless Shiloh bless his every step watch over him oh God as he goes from here all the way as I understand it to Colorado Lord there's snow and ice up there <laughs> So watch over my brother Shiloh, Lord, keep him safe, keep him strong, help him to know, Lord, that no matter where he travels, he is a part of this church family, and we have him in our heart. And, oh God, help us to commit that we will continue to pray for him in this new journey of his life. I thank you for him, I thank you for his witness, and I thank you for your love that goes with him. In the strong name of Jesus Christ, we pray, amen. Let me encourage you after the benediction to just greet him and hug him and let him know how much you appreciate him. Also wanted to tell you that there are 28 people from our congregation in Alpine this morning. Did you know that? I know. Why would you go to Alpine, right? It's the Cowboy Poets uh, something. Convention or... And so there's 28 people that I know of from our church that are there this morning. So pray for them and for their safe return home this week. And now for the benediction, oh God, go with us and help us to see that you are always with us. You want to heal us, but Lord, we have to put our hands in yours. Help us to take that step. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Everlasting.